Today we're going to uh, show how to gain access to a, an energized capacitor bank and change a capacitor. So usually there's a control compartment and it's labeled as such. And behind the door you'll find the operating operator's panel. This is typical three-stage bank and you'll notice there's a, a key and three switches that operate the stages. So the first step to uh, de-energizing the bank is to turn the stages off from auto to off or from on to off and you should hear uh, the switches open as you do so and also you should get an indicator lamp showing that the stage is open. Uh, once this is accomplished you can uh, turn the A1 key switch which will prevent uh, any stages from coming on and it also of course gives you the key. Once this is accomplished you need to wait a period of five minutes minimum and the reason for this is we need to allow time for the capacitors to discharge through their internal bleeder resistor. Uh, sometimes there's uh, an actual timer and the key is not available uh, before a five minute period. In this case there is no uh, interlock so you'll have to count that down. And again a minimum of five minutes. Once the five minutes has expired you can uh, Come over to the air disconnect switch and the ground switch. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert the A1 key into the lock on the isolation switch, the air switch. Turn it and that will allow the handle to move and we can operate that switch. There's a, a access window a visual indication that the switch is open we need to check that once that's confirmed that will allow the ground switch to be operated we'll do that now we'll, again we need to look through the window confirm that the ground switch is closed in okay so now we have a grounded bus within the bank and we have a visual isolation between the incoming cables and the overhead bus. Now having done this what we've done is de-energize the bank however the the cables that feed that isolation switch may still be live. Um, we need to verify that if there's a feeder breaker that that has been opened and racked out and confirm that the incoming feeder cables have been de-energized. We're going to take a look at that right now. So by taking the key out of the ground switch we can move it to the double lock on the incoming access door, insert the key, turn it, and that should allow that door to open. Notice there's a barrier door and also another lock this lock here is integrated with the upstream breaker and it will not allow access to the incoming compartment without the upstream breaker being open and racked out. Again, uh, not all banks are equipped this way so uh, it's up to the uh, servicer to confirm that the cables, the incoming cables to this compartment have been de-energized. Why don't you go ahead and open that Chris, we'll take a look inside. I'm going to show you the isolation air disconnect switch and you can see it's open and right above that is the ground switch and we've confirmed that that's closed. So at this point we know that beyond the on the load side of this disconnect switch we're grounded. Okay. Now this door does not have to be opened in order to access the capacitor bay or the vacuum switch bay, but we're showing this 
to you so you understand the potential for uh, for that that bay being energized and the uh, the risk. So go ahead and close that, Chris. And you can see that there are still two keys in here. Now, if you if you want to get in the uh, capacitor bank, but you don't want to access this door, just leave it closed. Rotate your key and remove the the one that frees up. That's the A3 key. And we'll walk that over to the capacitor bay, stage one. Turn the key, and that allows you entry into the capacitor bay. Inside you see the capacitors, the vacuum switch, the fuse, and uh, associated bus work and cabling. There's an inrush reactor overhead bus. So at this point we have access to the bay but since it's a capacitor, we want to make sure that there's no energy left. You should never assume that the capacitor is completely discharged, and uh, a manual method for discharging is always recommended. So we're going to use a hot stick, and we're going to ground the tip, and we're going to manually touch areas where there may be energy stored, particularly the capacitors. This is one method of discharging. Uh, there are other methods, but the bottom line is assume that there is a charge in the capacitor that needs to be discharged before deassembly. At this point, we're going to remove the capacitor. And you can see there's a fuse on one terminal. We're going to remove that fuse by opening the bales and pulling the fuse from the clips. Once the fuse has been removed, we can remove the associated wiring from the neutral side capacitor as required. In this case, it's a grounded neutral, so we'll remove that grounded wire and the common wire. It's also nuts and washers that mount the capacitor to the rails. We need to remove that hardware. Once that's done, the capacitor can be lifted out. Now you'll note that the fuse clip assembly is still attached to the old capacitor and we'll need to transfer that to the replacement capacitor before returning it to the bay. So that's it. Uh, we'll put it back in for you and uh, show you how everything hooks up. Place capacitor on the uh, studs that are available on the C channel. Reinstall the mounting nuts and washers.
Reinstall the uh, neutral cables. And then we'll retrieve our fuse and we're going to note, note that the fuse has a top and a bottom. The top has a paper membrane on it and a yellow label. So the, the top part of the fuse needs to point towards the blown fuse mechanism and that's the, uh, the blue uh, area there with the uh, with an actuator protruding. Clip the fuse back in. Make sure that no tools are left behind and nothing is inadvertently grounded. And we're going to close that bay back up. Just closing the door. We're going to turn the keys, and now that key has been removed. The other key is captive, and the door is locked. We'll come over to the incoming compartment, do the same. Rotate the keys. That key comes out. The other one is captive, and the door is locked. This key, which is the A2 key, will go into the ground switch. Allow that to be operated. I'm going to uh, look inside, make sure that it did open. And now, having uh, done that, it'll allow you to close in the isolation switch and give you the A1 key. The A1 key comes back over to the control panel, inserts into the A1 lock. You rotate that, and now you're back in operation you can operate your switches either manually or through the auto feature and that's it